you probably can't get pregnant because you're getting old. Isn't it over for you? My 18-year-old little sister Melissa began to brag about her own pregnancy. Ever since she was young, Melissa would always steal everything I considered precious. But to think she'd steal my husband and get pregnant. She really took everything from me. I was left all alone. At that moment, a reality I would have never imagined was suddenly revealed to me. My name is Noelle. I'm 26 years old. My husband Thomas is 36 years old, 10 years older than me. He's a high school teacher. We ride the same train to commute, so we got to know each other when he spoke to me one morning. At first, I didn't like that I was getting hit on, and I didn't think much of him. But then he protected me from a pervert on the train, and I felt how down-to-earth he was as an older man, so I was gradually charmed by him. After chasing after me for a while, I finally folded, and we began dating. Very straightforward with how he feels, he was reliable and overflowing with confidence, and that often made my heart skip a beat. He proposed to me at a restaurant with a scenic view of the city at night, and along with the engagement ring, gave me a bouquet of hundred roses. Though I laughed at him and called him cheesy, I was so happy that tears flowed from my eyes. He hugged me and said, There's no need for words. Just let me take care of you. He was always dazzling. I had no doubt that I would be spending the rest of my life with Thomas. Around one year passed after getting married. I was hoping to have children soon, but I wasn't feeling down because I just couldn't get pregnant. While working as usual, I began going to fertility treatments, which took its toll on me. As soon as my period would end each month, I would go to the clinic, take the medication they gave me, and suffer from side effects of the treatments. The days I went to the clinic, I would have to take off work. I couldn't just announce to everyone that I was undergoing fertility treatments, but people began complaining about all the days I was taking off. Not feeling like I was getting any closer to achieving my goal, I was incredibly concerned. I wanted to try IVF, but Thomas was old-fashioned and said he didn't want to rely on unnatural ways to have a baby, so we could do nothing but hope that good timing would get me pregnant. Tied to the issue of timing, Thomas began feeling responsibility and stress, which caused things to grow a bit awkward between us. One weekend, Thomas was away on a work trip, and I visited my mom for the first time in a while. As usual, we spoke about the fertility treatments. My mom became pregnant with my sister Melissa and I as soon as she wanted, so the fact I couldn't get pregnant made her glum. In the middle of our conversation, Melissa, who had been out with her friends, returned home. I'm home! Ah, sis, you still can't get pregnant? You're basically 30 now. You've become middle-aged. Why don't you just give up? So rude. Saying 26 is basically 30. We've never gotten along. Eight years younger than me, our parents always babied her, and that made her very sassy. Now, I should say way, way too sassy. She always looked down on me, and basically considered me to be her servant. Ever since we were young, if she liked any dolls or stuffed animals of mine, she would immediately take them. Well, our parents would make me give them to her. I was the older one, so I dealt with. But instead of being grateful to me, she just considered herself to be better than me. Though she's 18 years old, she doesn't help out around the house at all, nor does she have a job. She just uses our parents' money to play around with her friends as much as she wants. It's partly our parents' fault since they always just let things slide. I was originally thinking of spending the night with my family, but I decided that being around Melissa would just cause me more mental stress, so I went home instead. From that time on, Thomas began returning home from work late every night. He would come up with excuses like that he had to finish tasks related to the hobby club he was in, or that suddenly two teachers quit so his workload increased. We continued trying to get pregnant late at night, but it wouldn't work. Then, one Saturday morning, our doorbell rang. Oh, who is it this early? Thomas stared at his phone in silence. When I opened the door, I saw it was Melissa. Huh? 
Why are you here? I have a surprise for you. She spoke with a wide grin, unable to hide her excitement. I have a bad feeling about this. Before I could say another word, she stepped into our home as if it was hers and slipped off her jacket. Ah, Tommy, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You look handsome as always today. Melissa spoke with a cutesy voice and sat next to Thomas at the dining table. Sorry to keep him waiting. Did Thomas know she was coming over? I'm feeling uneasy about this. What are you here for? I sat down at the table across from them, but no matter how I thought about it, this was strange. I'm your guest, aren't I? Aren't you going to offer me something to drink? She really is a useless wife, isn't she, Tommy? She stuck her bottom lip out and made a cute face at Thomas, who just mumbled back. I have something I want to show you. As she said that, she took out a photo. It was an ultrasound photo of a baby. The thing I wanted the most. Why does my sister... Unable to speak for my own confusion, my sister continued. This is my baby. Or I should say, mine and Thomas's baby. Huh? Everything went blank. I could hear my heartbeat getting faster and louder. It became so loud that I couldn't hear what my sister was saying anymore. My sister and husband was having an affair. Maybe they were going to apologize? Thinking that, I looked over at Thomas. He opened his mouth to speak. I have no use for a woman in her thirties like you. Recently, all you've been talking about is getting pregnant, and it's been getting on my nerves. I want a young wife, so why don't we break up? What? Hearing something I never imagined, all I could do is gape in shock. From the corner of my eye, I saw my sister smile comfortably. Before I realized, I was running out of the house sobbing. Thomas didn't run after me. All my hopes were dashed, and I could feel how deeply my heart was hurt. I went directly to my parents' home to talk to our mom, but all she said was, There's really nothing you can do about Melissa. No matter what I said, she wouldn't see things from my view. There's no way. That attitude is what made Melissa like this. Dad spoiled Melissa even more than Mom did, so I knew that talking with him was pointless. I couldn't rely on our parents. With nowhere to go, I went over to my cousin's house, who lived on her own nearby. She listened to my story and got angry as if everything had happened to her. That in itself was a huge source of support for my broken heart. I divorced my husband shortly after. My feelings for my husband had completely disappeared. I didn't feel like even talking to him, so the signing of that one paper brought our relationship to its end. But my anger towards my sister and ex-husband wouldn't calm, and I felt my heart bubbling every day. I felt like my life would end like this, with me being stepped on and used until the very end. One day, as I was strolling outside, wondering what I should do, my phone suddenly rang. Hello? Yes. Yes. Ah, I had forgotten about that. Huh? Oh, really? <laughs> After that phone call, I knew I could get back at them. It's okay. It'll be okay. Half a year passed, and I heard from mom that Melissa had given birth. Though I was completely over my ex-husband, my heart still hurt slightly. Now then, time to move. I headed towards the apartment I used to live with Thomas in. Now he lived there together with Melissa. Ding dong. Oh, sis, it's been a while. I thought I wouldn't meet you here ever again. Why are you here? Melissa looked surprised I was here. Her newborn baby girl was cradled in her arms. Could it be that you still haven't forgotten Tommy, so you're here to meet him? I won't give him back to you. I don't need you to. I yelled back inside my heart. But I keep that inside and remained calm. I have something important to talk to you about. I walked into the house. Our simple interior design from before had changed a lot. My sister was still young, so posters and figurines from the shows she liked were all over. There was no way anyone can relax here. Thomas was sitting in the living room. He wouldn't make eye contact with me. Ah, 
I'm going to make everyone a cup of coffee because I'm a good wife. Before Melissa headed to the kitchen, she handed her baby to Thomas, whose face immediately changed. He grinned, and you could see how his heart was melting. Well, the baby was cute. What could you do? Well then, let's start. I don't need coffee. And that baby isn't yours. As I said that to Thomas, Melissa froze. Huh? What? What are you saying? Thomas finally looked up at me. What are you saying, Noel? This is obviously Tommy and I's baby. What's the meaning of you saying this now? Melissa screamed, her face bright red. Look at this. I pulled out a sheet of paper. It showed the results of a test proving Thomas was impotent. What is this? Thomas and Melissa peered at the paper. When I was getting fertility treatments, I began to wonder whether Thomas might be infertile. So I secretly took a sperm sample of his to get tested. The results came through on the phone the day I was wondering how I could get back at them. My ex-husband couldn't have kids. So the reason we couldn't have a baby wasn't you? It was me? Huh? Then this child... Thomas's arms that were holding the baby trembled. I... I'm sorry, I... Unable to make excuses, Melissa burst out in tears. She was admitting to it, huh? Seeing Melissa like that, Thomas burst. Hey, Melissa, who is it? Who is the father? Melissa just continued to cry and apologize. Scared, the baby also began to cry. It was chaos. Tell me the truth. Cornered, Melissa finally told the truth. The father was her boyfriend at the time, who was younger than her. At the time, he was a 17-year-old high school student. Since the two of them couldn't get married and raise the child together, they decided to use an adult they could easily fool. That turned out to be Thomas. Attracted by young girls, Thomas played right into their hands. But listen, the person I love now is you. Melissa looked up at Thomas with puppy eyes, which made me laugh. Quit the act. You're still dating that guy. I took out a photo. It showed Melissa's boyfriend hugging her at the hospital after she gave birth. It was from just a few days ago. Huh? Thomas and Melissa both went pale. My cousin took that photo. Being related to Melissa, she had gone to the hospital with her parents to visit Melissa and the baby, and they happened upon that scene. Unable to believe the situation, they cornered Melissa's boyfriend as he left the hospital and questioned him. Wanted to make sure Thomas and Melissa get payback for what they did, she shared the photo with me. She really pulled through for me. By the way, I'm pregnant now. Just like my sister did before, I took out an ultrasound photo and put it on the table. After divorcing Thomas and feeling depressed, my colleague Sean supported me a lot. Not much time took for me to be charmed by him. Of course, I thought it was silly of me to jump into a new relationship so shortly after my divorce. I thought he probably just pitied me. But supposedly he had been interested in me since I first joined the company because he thought I was strong and considerate. On our fifth date, he told me he wanted to protect me and said we should get married. At that point, I completely trusted him and had fallen for him. Maybe it's about time for me to consider getting remarried. As I was considering that, we discovered I was pregnant. My fears of being infertile disappeared. That served as further proof that Thomas was impotent. My prideful ex-husband had a pathetic look on his face I had never seen before. My sister, who until now had bullied me for being unable to have kids, couldn't say anything. But she seemed intrigued by something on the ultrasound. She was staring at the name of the clinic printed on the photo. Huh? I.E.K. Ladies Clinic? Melissa, no way. You're going to give birth there? That clinic is famous in the area as a super high-class maternity hospital. Rooms that look like they're from an expensive hotel, exquisite meals, spa treatments for new mothers, and so on. It's well known for treating its clients like princesses, and is often used by famous people. 
Your little sister begged us to let her have her baby there, even though we don't have that kind of money. Our mom complained to me once. I didn't think much about it at the time. How? My new husband. He's the inheritor of a famous foreign investment enterprise. Saying it like that is a bit embarrassing because it seems like I'm showing off, but it's true. I found out the truth when we were registering our marriage. Though Sean's father was the president of a large company and was a bit old-fashioned, he completely accepted the fact we got pregnant before marriage and that I had been divorced and welcomed me into the family. Sean's mother was just as kind and accepting. Though I felt like I couldn't trust people like before, they were warm enough to melt my frozen heart. My in-laws ensured that I could give birth at that clinic. He's currently my colleague, but he's soon going to take over his father's company. My sister fell into her chair. She couldn't say anything. Where did her combative spirit go? Well, that's that. I don't think we'll be meeting each other again, so I came to say my final goodbyes. Take care. I took my ultrasound photo and left. After I exited the house, I realized. Ah, I left behind my ex-husband's fertility test result and the photo of Melissa with her boyfriend. Oh well. All the bitterness that had been weighing me down disappeared. This morning, I found out my baby to be gender. How should I tell Sean? How will he react? I'm sure he'll be happy regardless if it's a girl or a boy. My head was full of happy thoughts of our future together. In the blink of an eye, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy, and he turned six months old. The more he grows, the more his smile becomes like Sean's. It's adorable. Our son can't walk yet. Watching Sean lightly play soccer or catch with our baby in his arms is so lovable. As for my ex-husband and sister, their relationship obviously couldn't continue after that, and they divorced. Having dropped out of high school to give birth, Melissa was now doing nothing but locking herself in her room. The father of our baby had gone on to university where he started dating someone new and completely abandoned Melissa. Supposedly, he cut off his ties with his family as well. Attracted to young girls, as always, Thomas had tried pulling something with some of his students, and I recently saw in the news that he was fired from his job. That's karma. I'm living such a peaceful and happy life. It's as if that tough past was all just a bad dream. I'm almost grateful to Thomas and Melissa for giving me the chance to live the happy life I am now. Sean and I both quit our job at the same time, and he went on to prepare to inherit his father's company. He looks excited for that new challenge. He comes home from work early every night to help bathe, feed, and take care of our baby. He also helps make dinner and clean. He's really a wonderful husband. As I stood on our balcony, gazing at the spring sky and thinking about everything that has happened, Sean called out to me. If you stay outside for too long, you're going to freeze. He put a cardigan over my shoulders. Thank you, but today is warm, so it's okay. You're worrying too much. This fall, a new smiling face is going to join our family. My reasons to be happy are only increasing.